Hello. How's it going? Sorry, I'm almost late, huh? You've got your iced tea and you're in your recliner and you're ready. That sounds really splendid. <laughs> I um, have this favorite place in my town that makes iced tea and I'll drive all the way over there to get it. Hi, Malin. Um, it's so good. There's just something about it. It's just a black tea, but there's something about it that um, is so amazing. And I was over there the other day and I just gave her a mason jar. Hi, Kathleen. I was like, we found this up. I was like, your tea is amazing. She goes, I, I know. It's just like, it's just better than most places. And she's right. And I forgot I had a half a jar left yesterday. And I was so excited when I found it. I was like, yay, I'm going to sew and drink iced tea. It's either that or watermelon, you know. So um, welcome, everybody. Happy Saturday. I'm Sarah Me, and this is So So Live. And um, I'm streaming on Twitch and YouTube. So um, you might see me talking to people on both, but you might not see their comments. Hello, Anne. How's it going? Welcome from Texas. There's people from all over the world that come here, which is pretty cool. You might have some of that too, Jan. Yeah, watermelon. Watermelon. <laughs> I just saw a video game, like it was at like a, a like a, convention or something. I don't really know what it was. And um, I saw they were like streaming this these people playing it and you got to play as a little watermelon slice. And I was like, oh, there was an avocado, like a cup of tea, a piece of bacon and a little watermelon. They were all running around on the map doing things. It was cute. Hi, Lisa. Hi, Polly. How's it going, you guys? So um, I'm wearing my um, my muslin. Not bad, eh? Not bad. I'm, I'm pretty pleased with these. When I first put them on, I was like, okay, I'm just going to raise the waist. And then I just was like, you know what? Wear them for a little while. And I was like, why would I wear these to the waist? They're like, it's like way up high. It's perfect. So I'm going with it. I'm excited. I think my actual fabric is a little bit lightweight, lighter weight and a little stretchier. So, you know, there's that. There's that kind of... Um, random thing that is in the in the mix there why is my air I, I think i must get a little hotter as soon as i start streaming because um uh the uh air conditioning always feels like it's not on <laughs> so let's see here if you're new here welcome i hope you really like it it's a really wonderful like group of people that hang out here and chat and if you want to chat with us and you're on YouTube, you just need to create a channel, which is just an account. That's all it is. And then you can chat with us. Um, you can ask questions. You can do whatever you want. You can sit here and lurk. You can just watch. Whatever. You're welcome here. And we welcome all ages, abilities, sizes. It doesn't matter who you are. You're welcome here. If you're interested in sewing and talking about sewing, please, you know, it doesn't matter who you are. So let's see, we are making the Ash Jeans by Megan Nielsen Patterns. It comes in a four pant leg widths and lengths. And I am doing the first one, which is the regular length. What's it called? Uh, modern Slim Jean, I think is what I'm doing. Yeah, 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 Modern Slim Jean. And then there's a skinnier version than that. And then there's a bootleg version and a straight leg. And the straight leg I thought was going to be the one I wanted because I just wanted it to be straight. But it looked, it looked a little wide for me. So, cool. So, first, I'm going to kind of, um, because I feel like we got short shrift the other day when the stream crashed when I was doing all the pattern alterations. So, I'm just going to take it a little slow on the cutting. And we can talk about pattern and fit issues. I have a couple of things I'm going to do. Um, one modification I decided to do today, just because I want to, is I'm going to create the, um, the front hand pockets. I'm actually going to make them go all the way to the center front as kind of like a slimming tummy panel. But I'm going to do it uh, in an experimental way um, to me. I don't know. This way may exist out there. I don't know. I've only ever seen this on the ginger jeans and every time I sew those, I sew them incorrectly. I still put the panel, one time I chopped it off. 
And then the other times, I just put it in, in the wrong order. I get so excited about the zipper fly, I do the zipper fly, and then I'm like, oh shoot, I have these pockets that were supposed to go in there. But at the same time, I don't really want to add too much bulk here. Um, so I think I'm going to try and do it with one layer. We'll see. Right? And then the other thing I'm going to do is just a cutting modification. I'm going to interface these pocket, the little pocket part right here. My little pet peeve or my little like thing that I don't like is, do you guys ever get it where it wrinkles right here? It does this. I don't like that. I think it's just too thin there compared to the rest of the pant. So I'm gonna add some stability. And I did this on a pair of pants we made and I forgot that I did this and it worked really good. So I'm gonna try that again. So I just gotta remember to interface them or cut two layers, so. All right, I'm gonna turn down my air conditioner because I'm sweating right now. So I'll be right back. Hopefully I don't lose pattern pieces because when I turn on the AC, cause it's right there and it blows right at me here, but it feels so good. Right, Lisa? Yeah, 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 yeah. So I, I think it's a combination of the fact that, you know, the jeans are probably pulling in a couple of places because of my curves. Maybe, maybe the jeans could be let out a tiny bit here or there, but without like really sitting there being detailed about some of those little micro fit adjustments, um, because you know, one moment that's fine and one moment it's not, I think if I just stabilize that spot, it'll cut it, cut it down, you know? And typically I don't wear things that go just to my waist. This is like kind of the shortest thing I'd wear, mainly because it's so like, you know, all over the place that it gets kind of hung up on my waist. So, anywho, um, so yeah, so this is my needle sharp box. And I got everything I needed to make the jeans in there. So I got the denim, I got the pocket um, lining, I got interfacing, a zipper, thread, top stitch thread, and the um, rivets and the tack button. I always want to call this a snap. It's never a snap. And I even got a mini anvil, which is pretty cute. Yes, I am, I, you know, Jan, I think I am going to, or I'm going to add half of it back and then trim a little off the back because they feel pretty good. Other, either that or I'm going to just not do it once I decide if my fabric is stretchier and thinner. Hi, Claire, how's it going? I think we have two Claire's here. Oh, no, we have an and Claire. <laughs> so, yeah, Lisa, exactly. I'm always smoothing it down. I'm always checking to see if it's, like, wrinkled there. <laughs> so... I know the mini anvil is a, it's pretty adorable. I'll pull it out when we put on the um, button and the rivets. I have to admit I hardly use it because I use a <laughs> I use a pattern weight to hammer my tack buttons in. Um, I don't recommend that by the way. In fact, Rayanne, um, when we would put tack buttons on, she was like, I don't know how you do that. And I think it's because at the time it was all I had out in my shop and I couldn't go home and get a um, a hammer or I didn't want to walk in the house and get a hammer I whenever wherever my shop was and I got really good at using this little tiny I have an iron like an old iron like I use for pattern weights I have a little tiny one that's this big and like an old-fashioned kind that you would put in the coals and then you know then iron with, with a hot pad and that's what I use because I can put my whole hand on it and um, and I'm more accurate with it so I've been trying to work on using a hammer instead because obviously that's far more universal <laughs> So, you know, um, universal is a little better. So uh, the mini anvil, though, is pretty darn cute. It's it's like this big. <laughs> I didn't even know it was coming in my box. So, all right, so let's get to it. Um, the first thing I did today was I taped all of my pattern pieces to this paper, mainly because I kind of... I kind of wasn't very gentle with it the other day and between the ink and me cutting it out and then me shoving it in the bin, um, it needs a little TLC and I actually really love these and I plan on making another pair someday. So I might as well just transfer it to paper and I can just do that today really quickly. Um, and this is my, this is also my, um, what do you call it? Like 
my gentle reminder that if you are looking for the next big thing for your sewing studio, if it's possible, and I know it's not possible for everybody, get a standing height table that's big. That's bigger than this, if you can. Because um, I couldn't even tape this together on this table here because it just isn't deep enough, mainly because I don't want to knock my junk because you guys are over there, right? There's all kinds of equipment over there. Um, and, uh, you know, I had like some fabric here and have all my little tools here. And, you know, on the big table, my big table is pretty big. It's four feet by eight feet. I know that's really big, but if you can do something that's like three by six, you will send me a thank you note that I pushed you. So get off of the floor. Any recommendations? Um, so I have looked at tables, but you know what I do? I don't actually have an official table. So what I did was I got the metal shelving, you know, that you see like in garages, the really heavy duty sturdy kind. And I get the kind of metal shelving that can be broken down into two halves. So instead of it being, I think it's six feet tall or it's close to six feet tall. Um, you can break it down into two like three foot heights or, or one big six foot height. Um, they're harder to find broken down, but they're not impossible by any stretch of the imagination. So if, it, if worst case scenario, you're ordering it on a big, from a big company, but um, you can find them at like Home Depot or Lowe's or something like that. So then I use the shelving as the base of my table and then you have storage underneath, right? This is also the most affordable way I've found to get a table. And then I go to the wood department <laughs> and I get a piece of either, I, I prefer the subfloor, like if you can get a piece of subfloor, it's about three quarters of an inch thick to an inch thick depending. You just want something that's not gonna bow, okay? So you can af afford, if you're gonna do as big as mine, you're gonna need two, two um, shelving units. So you have four, at least three halves underneath your table supporting it, right? Yeah, and if you can put them on casters, that's great. But if you're doing something that's like three feet by six feet, you could probably get away with one shell that's you know broken down into two and then one piece of wood and they will cut the piece of wood for you at the store so just make sure you cut it the width of your shelves my shelves are 48 inches but you can get them 36 inches so just think about it a little bit bring a piece of paper and a pencil bring a tape measure so you can kind of stand there and go okay is this how big i want do those measurements near a bolt of fabric you know, because like right now, um, this right here, this table fits a whole bolt of fabric going across. And you know, I think that this table's 30 inches. So ideally, if you can get it like four feet deep, it's great because um, you can unroll a bolt of fabric and, un and fold it open. But I would tell you, you can't reach that far. So you don't actually need it to be that deep. So, the, and then you can someday splurge or ask for a birthday gift or a Christmas gift, a custom cut cutting mat that will fit on top. And then you have the whole surface. And I feel like you can do all of this for probably under $200. So, and then at least it's custom size for your space and you have storage underneath. Yeah, I know that metal table isn't the prettiest, but I'm not going for that. I'm going for function. So if you have someone you can, that, you know, can build your table. So anyway, I need to stop talking about this, but I just wanted to put out that thing that when people ask me what my favorite tool is, I always say my table. I know you're thinking I would say my awl or my rotary knife. I love those two things, but it's hands down the table. It's the thing I look for all the time. I'm like, where's the table? You did that say your table's five by four. That's awesome. That's great. Yeah. I mean, table is like, it's a gift to yourself and you deserve it. You really deserve it. So get off of the floor. You'll be, you'll be more motivated to go sew or do anything on it. And then, you know, have a couple rules. Mine is there's no food allowed at my table at all. So anyway, you guys, yeah, yeah. You have a great, that's great. You know, dining room tables are, are nice size wise, but they're too low and your back is going to just be mad at you, you know? And then you're like, oh, I don't really feel like sewing today because my back is sore from yesterday. It's all strained, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you get that hubby on that, Gina. He has not enough to do. <laughs> so, 
And you know, if you don't like the way that looks, what I've done too is put a skirt around it with a piece of fabric that I just couldn't bear to cut into. And then I just sewed Velcro on it and then put sticky back and then I stick it on. So I've done that a few times, especially when we brought our machines to the trade show and we sewed there live. We skirted everything so that it looked more appealing to people, you know? Yeah, right, Terry? I know, I totally know. And your knees too, like when you get down on the ground. Plus you move your, your rotary knife, around, your rotary mat. So anyway, or your, your scissors, or you're cutting your carpet, leaving pins. <laughs> okay, so that is just my like, you deserve it to have a table that you can work at. And this was a good reminder for me. I'm sorry I'm like blinding you guys with this white. I cannot get rid of the shadow. You see the shadow? It's driving me crazy. Someday I will have the means to build it so that I can not have that shadow. So anyway. All right, so I'm just going to transfer my markings to this paper because here's the deal. Yeah, right, Jan? Exactly. That's a great quilter's rule. Oh, they have seconds? That's awesome. What a great tip. Um, I got mine at, um, where did I get mine, you guys? Well, shoot. I don't, I don't, oh. No. It's not on here. Anyway. Yeah, so anyway. All right, so I'm gonna transfer my markings because all I did was tape this on here and once I cut this off, it's gonna cut the tape edge off. So I am gonna lose kind of my the, my pattern piece. I'll keep it, but you know. Um, I'm just gonna mark all these things here. Um, we'll just do exactly what they have. Uh, I'm doing 34, right? Yeah, yeah, this one right here. Wait, 30. It's the one, the number is below the line. Okay, great. Ugh. Ugh. <laughs> okay. And is there no notches over there? All right. Um, I'm gonna staple this in just a couple of spots so that when I cut it off, I don't, I don't get much slippage, you know? And then um, I'm gonna do something a little extra, and that is um, I'm going to mark my pocket with drill holes, because I, I just like it. So here's my pocket right here. And I'm gonna go quarter inch down, quarter inch in from the par pocket marking. Right there, and then I have a screw punch, so that's how I do it. Okay, so now I'm extra marked. Oh, that's where you used to work, Lisa. Thanks for that tip, that's awesome. Quilter's rule, ask for a second. Yeah, I used to use MDF as well, and the last time I went there, I couldn't find it. Um, it was actually, mel they called it melamine. So you can get like particle board that has a laminate surface, you guys. They're pretty, they're like, they were like 80 bucks last time I, I got one, that was a long time ago. And then the next time when I went to look for one, I couldn't find one and my friend who was with me was like, let's get a piece of subfloor. I would have never known to do that. And then he actually sanded the edge. Here's my pet peeve about my table is that it does scratch the front of my clothes and it's, and it's typically why I stopped wearing hand knits, so. And then you had, it had already casters already. That's awesome. Hello, Eliza. Welcome. I was just giving a lecture on the importance of having a dedicated table. <laughs> All right, let's move the mouse out of the way before I click something by accident. All right, so I'm transferring my green line. I hope you guys can't see how angry my wedding ring finger is on camera. I, I always like... I promise it'll calm down like a month when it starts cooling off. <laughs> it's so bad. All right, so I'm on this one right here. Right, we need this one because this is our um, notch for our zipper. All right, let's put a couple of staples in here. This, cutting this out is a little overkill with my big um, 
pattern scissors, so I might use my rotary knife, but I don't feel very accurate with my rotary knife, but we'll give it a shot. And we need to add back a little bit here, right? Let's do that. Let me find a soft lead. Here we go. So I gave my daughter the um, little watermelon, or the <laughs> watermelon, the um, little leather patch that came with this. Table some 12 tape. Oh, that's a good idea, Jan. Dang, that's a good idea. You can get a little strip of melamine to put on there. I just never did it. I've actually, this one I've taped. So the, this table here, by the way, I got at Uline. And I, I actually don't really support that company. Um, but I've been in a pinch and it's the only place I could find things to, that will ship and I would get it right away. This thing I didn't need right away, but I need boxes <laughs> so a couple times. And um this uh, table is, um, I have a maple one right there, and I, I love it. It's got like industrial metal legs, so it's not like pretty, but it's a really, the tabletop's pretty on that one. This one is cheaper. I just got the particle board top. So I have three of these. I have one, two that are maple top, and then one that's the particle board. Um, and I had to tape the front of it so that it wouldn't scratch me. It's beveled, but it scratches me, and it scratches and ruins my clothes. All right, so let's see here. Uh, this is cutting away right here because remember I made shorts. So we're okay there. Um, this is my only thing right here, and then I'm gonna probably trim off a little right here. I think I'm just gonna walk my side seams on top. But now I'm gonna look at making my pocket. So let's, let's cut this out a little bit. It looks a little bigger than an inch, or eighth of an inch. It's a little rolly. I tried to flatten out my paper, but you know. Um, uh, it fit really good, Liza. I'm wearing them right now. Can you see? So, pretty good. I mean, you know, like I said on Instagram, there's the way you want to look in jeans and the how well your jeans fit, right? <laughs> so, <laughs> there's that. But, um, these fit, like, they're really, really comfortable. So, like, if I don't look in the mirror, I'm like, these are nice, you know? Like, I, they're really comfortable, and they fit perfect. So, a couple of things I'm going to do different. Um, I'm going to reinforce the little pocket facing right here so that I um, don't get wrinkles right there. And I'm going to add my pockets extra to my pockets so they go to the center front to um, kind of create a tummy panel, you know? So there's a crop and then there's a regular inseam or this is the tall crop inseam. I cut the crop leg off because uh, the tall the tall inseam off because I'm not growing anymore. So, you yeah. know, womp womp, right? My daughter would like to remind me any moment she gets that I'm not growing anymore. So my daughter and I had a bet for like, a really long time that I would that I told her I would be taller than her she won so hello Ray <laughs> you don't have iced tea or so oh <laughs> yeah yeah the I'm really liking the fit I feel like these fit me straight out the gate better than um, any other jeans I've made lately um, and I'm rethinking how I feel about curved waistbands because maybe back when I used to make jeans, I didn't like the curved waistbands, but now I kind of do. I do feel like I got the um, the button placement incorrect. So I lined my button up. Can you see? I lined my button up with my zipper, right? But see, what I don't like is I get this wrinkle right here, right? So I think that this button could be like a quarter of an inch past the zipper this way to do this. And then it would flatten it out and I wouldn't get that wrinkle. So, ah, oh no, really, Eliza? That's a bummer. This is this one I refashioned. I didn't make it, 
But I did cut the heck out of that top, didn't I? I, I just didn't like the way that top looked on me. It just was not my style. All right, so now my front is a front. And I think, well, this is still staying on here, so we'll try and stay, keep it on there. So um, sometimes artists have that spray adhesive and they will ad adhere their, their patterns to paper. I don't have any of that, so. And I don't really want to spray anything or anything. So I'm going to now work on this pocket idea I have. So I want to make my pocket have a tummy panel. Um, I'm actually not going to use this pattern piece. It'll just be confusing to line it up. So I'll just use a new one. So my, my thinking is that I'm going to sew the pocket I'm gonna have a piece that's the size of the pocket right here, and then it's gonna to sew to the other layer that goes all the way. So only one layer will go all the way. So, yeah, you know, it's a little it's a little tight, Ray, when I put it on, but now it feels fine. Like, I used a knit top <laughs> sleeve. Hello, Deb, how's it going? <laughs> so, yeah. All right, so let's see here. Um, at least I now have a little bit solid edge to trace along the little edge here. So I'm just going to dra draft my pocket again, and we'll use this one as kind of a, um, We'll use it as a template for the shape and stuff and the size so I'm not figuring all that out fresh. Yeah, I hope Eliza wins that that battle too. What's what's wrong with your neck facing? Is it are you sewing or are you cutting? I, I didn't I'm not doing the sides right here. I'm just looking for the rest of it because uh, the sides have changed. Um, I'm gonna, I'm just gonna staple this here. Now that I cut all the tape off. All right, so let's line this up here. Like this. All right. So basically I want one pattern piece that is basically like the, like half of this and then one that's gonna go all the way there, okay? Let me just think out loud for a second. Like I know how I wanna do this. Um, I wanna decide like, so this, this piece right here is the one that's closest to the top of the pant and that's probably the one that needs to go all the way over because that is behind, it's like my hand is, the back of it's hitting it, right? So I need the pocket bag underneath. So this piece is the one that'll be my pocket bag. This one is the one that's gonna go all the way over. <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> Eliza needs a break. So let's see here. So we have this one is the one that is going to go over. over. Oh, I didn't leave enough paper up here. Bummer. So we're just going to copy this and then we're going to go straight over because the pocket is going to end about right here, right? And we need that mark because I'm going to sew the pocket bag to this and then this will be a single layer, you know? Oh. Well, have you, can you unpick it or is it kind of too much? That's a bummer. I, I looked up that dress before, but I can't remember what it looks like, you know? Battle of the Mississippi. All right, where's my, how deep is my fly here? I went for the extra deep pocket. I may need to rethink that because look at how deep we're getting. <laughs> how do I feel about the depth? You're unpicking as we talk. These could lose some. Yeah, I feel like I could actually lose some. So that's, a, that's good. I 
it'll take off about an inch and a quarter, I think. Yeah, let's see. And maybe I will, should I shape it? I like the way that looks. Well, it's an experiment, right? You're in picking, yeah. Well, good, I'm glad we can keep you company. <laughs> it's always better with video or friends, right? All right, so this is gonna be my top pocket. And then, let's see, is this actually my fold line? Let's kind of straighten this up a little bit. And that'll be my pocket bag now, okay? The confusing part for me is gonna be if I want this part to show on the inside as the uh, nice fabric, right? Yeah, right, exactly. All right, so let's cut this out. I'll go a little lower. Not a big fan of that coming at an angle like that. I'm, I may feel like that's too low. Let's see where that would hit me. I mean, conceivably you could make this out of a um, compression knit. Make it a little bit smaller, and then it actually would, you know, hold your tummy in, right? Or you could use a stretch woven, which would go along the lines of the denim jeans a little nicer. So let's see if this was on me right now. Yeah, so I feel like I could trim a lot of this off right here. Yeah, in fact, what if I, um, how would I do that? I know people do these. What if I, I don't like, I don't like that angle right there. Yeah, right? Exactly, Deb. All right, that's my trial. I like that way that looks. Now let's make the other pieces. I don't think I have any more paper here. Yeah, I don't think I do. Um, I might steal this piece, actually. Yeah, I'm gonna steal this piece of paper here. So you guys, so today we're gonna cut these out and then uh, Wednesday and Thursday, we're gonna sew them together, no problem. And then Saturday, I'm gonna do the Scout Tee by Grain Line Studio, cause this is, I was thinking the other day that I need more tops, right? Like I got enough dresses. <laughs> um, I, I want more tops and then I saw like I've seen the scout tee and it's been a little bit like intriguing to me and then I saw that they're having a sale like for September so I thought maybe this would be a good opportunity to um, do the the um, scout tee because that'll be a pretty straightforward thing to do in one day I need this piece right here right now Let's see here. This is what I need. And this piece needs more paper because I just cut it off, dang it. It's hard to do pattern drafting when people are watching. Ooh, we making bias binding? Nice. Uh, it's on their website. 
and it the code is for 15% off and it's Scout T September. And if you, um, I think it's on their Instagram. The newsletter had like instructions on how to add it, but at the top of their checkout page, it's kind of, it's like really obvious, but then you kind of miss it because you're focused on all the like fields you have to fill out. There's a little apply coupon code link right there at the top of your, when you're checking out. Yeah, so I know, right, Malin? That's what I was thinking too, but um, I was thinking for $11 as the download that that would save me some time, and, and that for me is money sometimes, you know? Plus at least that you guys can see sewing the Scout Tee, and if you make something similar, you'll know how to do it, so. All right, so let's make sure this piece is correct before I use it. I'm lining up my action, the seam line that was there, the cut line that was there, adding this little bit of extra. I can't remember how the, how the notches, how do the notches work on this thing? Are they like, is it a quarter inch down? I don't know. But it does feel like something really easy to make lots of different variations on. I was thinking of doing a scalloped hem. Okay, so here's my facing. And I'm gonna shout at myself on this thing to interface it. Um, I'm not. A, I'm sorry if you guys want coin pockets. I'm not a big fan of coin pockets. Uh, they catch on things for me, so I'm not going to be doing the coin pocket. Just so you know. I still will miss this little note to myself. <laughs> Doesn't matter how loud I shout sometimes, right? <laughs> so. All right, so now we have our piece here. Looks like I could trim that a little bit better right there. I'm gonna trim this whole thing right here a little smoother. And then I'm gonna use my invisible tape, I mean invisible, removable tape. Kind of hold these together. And just trace this shape right here. Where's my, this is my good pocket? Wait, this is my good pocket, right? Yeah, let's, let's mark that guy up here. I should have wrote that in blue. Because it's lining. All right, so here's our, let's see where it's. Okay, so I think, I think I'll be pretty good using this piece of paper. No, maybe not. Yeah, yeah, okay, here we go. I'm being so skimpy with my paper, aren't I? I should just walk over and get my roll. Okay. This is where this ends. So I, my um, piece actually needs to... Let's see if I need to adjust this before I commit. Just a little bit right here. That's what I thought. All right. So I'm just drawing my shape of this pocket onto this piece. Just ignore that this looks like a pocket already, if you can. I'm 
I'm gonna draw this line here because I need to add seam allowance to that. So I think what I'm gonna do is edge stitch it on there, like roll it under and edge stitch it. And I'm just gonna do a quarter inch seam. That way I don't have to do the shaping. There we go. So that's my pocket bag. So I'll sew the pocket facing to this. And then I will um, sew this piece to the opening here of the pant. And then I'll attach these two together or some sort of order like that. Yeah, Green Line is the Scout. The Scout Tee is by Green Line Studio and they're just promoting it this month because they just kinda wanna refresh everyone's memory on how much they love that t-shirt and it does look like there's a lot of um, love for it, for it. But here's the thing about it. It's, it's a way to have a, a classy t-shirt made in a woven fabric, not a knit. So it looks like a knit t-shirt, like the silhouette is a knit t-shirt. Um, but I, I don't, but there's no neck band and it's just a simple little t-shirt so you can have kind of a classier version of a t-shirt but in a woven fabric. Yeah, so it's Grain Line Studio and they have a, a promotion. So I'm going to do that next weekend, next Saturday. All right, so if this piece, now I'm just kind of looking at like how this is. So this is my pants, right? It's like this. I'll show you the layers. Get rid of my removable tape, which is a little more forgiving. Okay, so we're gonna sew this piece on here, right? So this is our denim onto the lining. And then um, edge stitch it. You can even serge it and stitch it down if you're not caring about how clean finished it is. And then sew this to here, and then tack that to the center front. And now you have a single layer tummy panel pocket. <laughs> I just wanted one layer because I don't want to add to the tummy, you know. I'm also thinking about interfacing my fly so I don't get this diagonal wrinkle in there too. So that would add some bulk. So here we go. We're set. We just need to transfer a couple pattern pieces and we can start cutting. Get our, our green line on here. What the heck? What the heck? I'm getting confused. I'm confusing myself. Okay, that is the green line. Perfect. I can have nice handwriting. I want. <laughs> All right. These are all ready. I don't want these to fly away. Just put them over there. We have our front. We have our pocket here. The reveal. Oh yeah, the pocket. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I was thinking like, why not try and do a tummy panel? But let's try and do it my way. We'll see if it actually works. It, it might not. Hello, Beverly. Uh, well, I'm hoping so, Beverly, but I feel like the um, the button placement, so like I put my button right over the seam of my fly, right? So it's lined up, right? But look at that, I get the diagonal thing. So I'm thinking that if I put the button over here more, like past that seam, cause let's face it, it's gonna pull, right? So if I put it over here a little bit more, Let's try and hold it there. I, I get less, like pretend like I'm holding the button. And I think the if I put the interfacing, that would help too. 
Surprisingly, I'm pretty sure it says n no, not to cut interfacing. So, you know, um, I'm not. I'm not probably going to notch that. I, the reason I don't like notching if I don't have to is because you're putting a slit in the fabric, and then if it's too deep, then you have the little threads poking um, off of your slit, um, or maybe it causes the fabric to kind of relax and spread out right there when you're trying to keep it all nice and like the same width of your folds. So when I'm folding this to hem it like this and like this, if there's cuts there, it, it kind of splays out right there and it makes it less stable. Because there's a shape right here, that is your indication. They would never notch this in, the, in, the, in a production floor unless it was couture, by the way. Um, less notches is cheaper to cut and they just want their sewers to do what the pattern shape is doing. That's what, that's their cue. So you gotta remember, my combination of sewing things is comes from the a factory. So I'm always looking for streamline, but I gotta back off of that sometimes and do what's better for the garment because we're not making 10 of these and I understand that. Yeah, see, so this is cut one right side up, cut one right side up, no interfacing on these pieces. Um, but this one could probably benefit from some, you know, so. Uh, I'm just going to leave these. I'll cut these out on the paper. Oof. <laughs> I, this is my vow to you. I will never cut myself. Uh, I will never cut my finger off, especially. But I, I, I know that was a little bit like, Rear. don't worry. It looks scarier with an overhead camera than it really is. <laughs> All right, so this piece I might true up a little bit here. So let's put our green line on here. Even though my pattern pieces are sticking on here pretty good when I staple them, I'm still going to transfer all this just in case, you know. I still need to notch my front. I already did this, didn't I? I already did this. Great. So let's do this. I, I like calling out my notches so I don't forget to do it. That's not a notch. And then I have a notching tool. I'm going to use it so I can see it. I've been trying to figure out which one of my notching tools is the, the sharper one. I think I finally figured it out. But they, they don't like the soft paper. They like the stiff paper. All right, so let's... Cut this guy out. That's right. I'm on this line right here. This line right here. Hello, Nancy. Hi, Brooke. Um, I taped my pattern pieces to some of uh, stabler pa paper. Stabler? More stable paper. Hi, Vicky. Nice to see you. I think it's been a while. Um, and uh, I'm just cutting off all this excess before I go to do it on my paper. I'm doing the wrong size. Because then that way I can get a tighter layout. I can put my pattern pieces right up. And also I've been kind of truing the pattern a little bit because of um, some of the changes I made. That's all. Am I, am I literally cutting? Wait, 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 wait. Wait, don't I want this right here? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's why. Plus I, um, my marker, <laughs> I was a little harsh on this pattern, so. I think I would like to make more of these, so I figure why not treat it a little nicer right here, you know? And let's put the front on here. I'll, I'm about to start cutting though, don't worry. 
there's my notch. Did that just jump? Don't you hate that when that happens? Okay, so I'm gonna put this here. I hate my head being in the camera so much. It's like the most unflattering angle ever. All right, so here is my There's my side seam. Removable tape doesn't like tissue paper very much. <laughs> All right, so here's my front. Where's my, here it is right here. So here's my yoke. Um, I want to look at this. Did you guys see that curve when I was sewing? I actually feel like that's there. It makes room for the my booty. So I'm gonna line it up on the seam line here. <laughs> right, Beverly? Thanks. <laughs> I feel like, let's see here. I'm looking at this line right here. Let's see if that is five eighths in. Why would that dip down a little? Why indeed? Okay. So now let's do, um, let's do this. Let's look at our transition now, right? Sorry, I'm super focused. It's coming down here. I'm not gonna trim that off though. All right, so we have our Okay. That works better. Okay. I just want to make sure I'm getting a nice transition here and the seam line of the out seam matches still because we've increased the girth a little bit on the, the hip. <laughs> right, Beverly? I know. <laughs> okay, so this is pretty good. I want to follow my pencil line. It's kind of funny how uh, the I, this looks like it doesn't even need a yoke, right? Like the back always looks big enough not to have the yoke, so I always forget the yoke when I'm doing my pattern alterations. It's kind of a miracle I remembered the other day. Well, I forgot at one point, right? Let's uh, staple this on here. Yee! So once I cut around the perimeter, there's like this bare sliver of tape holding it on there, so it's pretty bold of me to do that. There's the notch so you know that the um, yoke sews to the pant here. This is already... Alright, we have our front, we have our back. 
we just don't have our waistband and our carriers. And then we're ready to cut. So this piece, we didn't put carriers the other day on uh, these shorts. I keep forgetting my uh, stapler. So what are you guys working on? I mean, I know what Eliza's doing. <laughs> Eliza is fighting the good fight and she's going to prevail. Um, I didn't allow for any, I didn't like make any allowances based on E since the pattern should be doing that for me. Um, and I went by both my measurements, but if I were just to pick one, I'd pick the hip because we all know the booty's harder to fit for me, at least it is. Um, and I could always, if, if the hip was, if I was, the hip forced me to pick a bigger size, I could always taper in the waist and vice versa. I would much rather, for me, that I'm more comfortable making that adjustment. Um, and let's see, I'm pretty sure, um, let's see if I was, so I picked the 44, the 34, the waist was a 34 and the hip was a 44. So the weight, the hip was actually two inches bigger than um, my hip. And the reason I picked that one now I'm remembering is because these look like a really slim jean and I didn't want them tight, tight. So these are, um, they're, they're, kind, they're not like loose, but they're not, they're not skin tight on me. I don't want carriers on my shorts, but I do on my jeans, Beverly. Yeah, you don't use them either? Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's nice, Terry. How fun. Will that help you with your suit coat making? Oh, you're making the Ashton top? People are really into the Ashton top right now. Is the Ashton top new? I thought it's been around a bit, right? Is it, look, it looks just like the Willow tank, right? Am I wrong? What's different about it from the Willow tank? Because I was trying to f figure that out. So I was like, well, do I need to make this? <laughs> All right, so here's the waistband. I didn't have any issues with this, except for the fact that um, I didn't keep track of my outside and my inside. And so I put the inside one on the outside or something like that, so. You can't just can't stop buying those vintage machines. <laughs> I used to be in that rabbit hole. Vintage crop pants, pedal pushers. Ooh. Isn't it pedal like um like a bike pedal? Cause you know, so that you wouldn't get your your um chain ink chain grease on your pants. Yeah, right? I want to see it too. It's new. If it's great. Oh, it's new. Okay, great. But Hel that's Helen's closet. The Ashton, right? Someone said. Is that Helen's closet or is it Cashmere? It's Helen's closet. Yeah, yeah. So is that, is Helen's closet um, like the, the Missy sizing we generally see on patterns? Because she's not doing plus for curvy sizes, right? I just can't remember. I'm having one of those days. <laughs> There's a raised lower line above. You know, someone mentioned that to me, Beverly, and they loved that. One of you actually wrote that to me in an email and they, and they found that to be so helpful. Ah, you're doing the Granville pedal. Yeah, yeah, pedal. Pushers. It's funny when you see something you've always said written out and it's like, oh, now I kind of get it. <laughs> All right. So, um, 
this worked really good, so I'm, just, I'm going for it. This is the other thing I think I'm gonna change when I cut out. I'm going to interface both pieces. Um, for the person that's been asking me about stuff like that, like uh, I, I don't, I find like, see right here, I'm getting little wrinkles right here. And like, it'd be easy to say like, well, maybe I need to make it a little bigger, but I don't want them to slip, right? So. Yeah, I know, she, okay, so she's extending her size, but she does, it's not like that right now, right? I'm just trying to figure out why it's different than the willow tank. I'm not disputing, like, why she made it. I mean, come on, that's fine. She can do whatever she wants. Um, I'm just curious what the difference is. There's been so many tank tops patterns posted lately, and one of them I was like, why did you do that one? This one exists. <laughs> It wasn't the Ashton though, I didn't know about the Ashton. Just because the one I saw that existed, they didn't do a very good job. I hate to say it, but they didn't. It really doesn't look good on anybody and um, I don't like the way it's constructed. It's really unflattering and it's a shame. It's such a shame, you know, it's like, oh well. That's my two cents. <laughs> All right, I'm notching my waistband. So see, look, so the, this, is, uh, this is definitely the right front. There's your fly extension right there. And as if you're wearing it, you know. I was just a total dweeb and did not pay attention to that when I interfaced my, my waistband. I interfaced the inside one. So then I had to use it for the outside. And so then I didn't get to follow the notches. And you know, notches are just, ever so helpful and someone spent a lot of work putting them on there right um that's awesome beverly yeah someone said that um she was extending her size ranges that's awesome Okay, this one, this one, this one, let's see, oops, uh, this one, and that's just the seam allowance right there. See, cut to, you know what I'm thinking is that the instructions for cutting interfacing aren't on the patterns, they're in the sewing instructions. And that's probably why I, I'll bet that fly has interfacing cut on it and I'm missing it because I'm not using this sewing instruction to cut this out. So if anyone's cutting this, you might want to look at that. So she even might say this, I don't know. I'm cutting two of interfacing. I'm writing it on there. That's awesome, Malin. That's good to know. You did the armhole with the bias finding. That's cool, it's cool. I don't think she has cup sizes though, right? I can't remember now. All right, you guys, let's cut this baby out. You can move the rulers out of the way. Everybody go away here. <laughs> Let's cut our lining out first because it's cute. I thought I ironed this. Sure don't look like I ironed it. So this was in my needle sharp subscription box. I didn't get to pick the pocket lining, um, which I know is, I think Louise would find funny because I keep getting these um, Rifle Paper Company fabrics. Um, and uh, I think it's really cute. I actually looked for a, a flamingo emoji today and I couldn't find one. I was disappointed. I thought I ironed it. Clearly I did not iron it. Let's try and get this to be folded on the grain though. The um, denim is sadly cut really off grain. I'm going to be able to show you exactly, and I hate doing that, but it's just, it's just something to think about. I 
I know, they are cute, aren't they? I would never pick this either, and I don't know why, but it's really cute. And I love the color, I love this color, you know? I love that coral color, it's one of my favorite colors. I don't know if there were other um, pocket lining choices. It would be fun to see all of them if there were. Maybe, because uh, there were different, so I got the, at the time, what was it called? The, um, well, I don't know. Oh, I had the, I don't know what the heavyweight box is called now. Is it the indulgent box? So you got to pick from three or four denim choices, and I picked the black. So I bet there were different pocket linings for each denim choice. Maybe that's what it was. Um, I don't really need these pieces. So I'm going to put those aside. Let's start doing our pile in here. So this is the coin pocket and here's the little leather patch. Oh, that's what I was gonna tell you guys was that the leather patch, Needle Sharp included a leather patch for the back of your jeans and she stamped something kind of cute on it. And I decided to ask my daughter to, to paint on it because my daughter's really into painting right now. So I handed it to her yes, a couple days ago to give to, to paint. And then she painted the cutest little scene of a watermelon growing in a field with the sun on it. And that, and um, I forgot to bring it. I, I was washing the dishes when she showed me. I was like, set it over there so I don't get water on it. And um, uh, it's really cute. Okay, what am I doing here? Okay, this fabric is going to go down there. You're going to go right here. You're going to go right here. You're going to go under here. All right, so I folded my denim so that um, it's all on the grain. So you can see, look, selvages all lined up. You see that? And look at how cut off grain it was. You see that? So, yeah, I, I hope that I can wash that leather patch, so. So yeah, so see, and look at the other end, same thing, see? So I'm only pointing this out to you guys because this is my own little personal platform that um, I know is a little cray cray, <laughs> but at the same time, this is exactly why, because if you were making, I'm just gonna take this to the extreme. If you were a quilter and you only needed a third of a yard and it was cut off grain, you didn't get a third of a yard, okay? You may have gotten a third of a yard in surface area, but you didn't get a third of a yard on grain. And quilters don't really want to amass these massive piles of fabric, right? But they have to cut a little extra. I didn't realize this, but a lot of quilters don't pre-wash. I had no clue about this. And someone just told me this. I was like, what? What do you mean you don't pre-wash? I didn't know that was a thing. So they don't pre-wash. But if you do then um like say you say you go to a fabric store that cuts on grain they cut the um on the cross grain perfectly and you walk away and your fabric looks like this the thing is when you put it in the washer and dryer this will fix itself it'll be on grain all right thank you eliza so um here's the other thing here's another extreme if you're making curtains and you're like i'm gonna go get some sheer fabric right um, a polyester chiffon or something like that, something very affordable, uh, easy care, um, just to diffuse a light, whatever, right? If that fabric isn't cut on grain and you're just like, I'm just going to use the full width of it, put a casing on the top, hem the bottom, and um, throw it up there. If it's not cut on grain and you decided to just roll over the edge and fold it, hem it, your curtains would hang at an angle, right? So they would not hang straight, even if it looks straight on the bolt or off the roll. So this is my problem. So even if you have, if you're at the fabric store and you're looking at the roll and she's cutting perfectly, I say she, it could be he, if they're cutting perfectly parallel to the roll, that does not mean it's on the grain, you guys. It does not mean it's on the grain. The grain is trickier than that. And so it's some, this is something you gotta look at. Like when you're cutting fabric at home, um, or say you want to like cut in increments or something like that, you can feel the grain line with your blade or your scissors. 
It's harder with twills. I understand that. But the thing is, this I don't even think this is a twill weave. Oh, it is. A, it is a twill weave. But it's not impossible. So this is my own little personal platform. Look at all this fabric lost, you know? So that is um, almost probably nine inches, which is a quarter of a yard. And, you know, fabric stores will say, um, yeah, you know, but Eliza, it's not necessary. You don't have to tear. Like when I first started working at a fabric store that cut on the grain, I was frightened. I was like, what? And I had graduated from, you know, with a degree in design, but it's not like I was taught how to cut fabric in the, in, at school and I was still really young. And I had worked at a Joanne Fabrics, or it was actually called House of Fabrics, you know. Um, I had worked at a Joanne Fabrics, or House of Fabrics. We didn't cut on the grain, of course. We did not cut on the grain. And see, here's my thing, is like, I have talked with people really nicely at fabric stores. They get a little prickly with me, but I'm just curious. I'm like, do you ever, have you ever heard of people cutting on the grain, you know? And then they're like, cutting on the grain, what? Usually they're just like, that's crazy talk. And then I'm like, huh, okay. And then um, a couple times I have run into people at fabric stores that are like, oh yeah, I have seen that before, but most of the time they say no, right? And then it's a discussion, you know, they're just like, yeah, but you can't just do that. You, The fabric store would lose fabric. If that's not true, they would lose maybe two to four inches, depending on how badly the bolt was given to them, right? It's why you can't trust the print on a bolt being on grain either. Yeah, that helps Lisa, but it doesn't it doesn't take away the fact that the fabric's off grain. Cuz this is pre-washed. But if you if you I'm just saying like cuz I worked at a fabric store and people would get a little testy with me when they would walk away and I cut it on grain. I would cut each layer. Um, and I, and it, and it isn't, it takes just a second longer. It's not hard. You really do get the knack. You can feel it. Um, and then I would walk, I would cut it and it would do this, right? And they'd be like, you just cut that off grain. I'm like, no, 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 I promise it's on grain. And I would show them and they're like, okay. And I said, when you wash this, it's going to all line up because the whole thing, it's, it's been, it's been, um, stretched on the bolt, um, and torqued. And it's so, it's so ever so little, like just a quarter of an inch here, there and everywhere adds up to being five inches off, you know? So um, it is possible and I really wish fabric stores would do it because you lose fabric, like you can't, like, okay, so yeah, could I cut this on the fold and then line it up and get my fabric? Yeah, but who does that, right? So I have to back off, right? So I've already lost those inches. I'm have to back off at the other end. So the fabric store's winning, by the way. <laughs> so I don't know, that's just my little personal platform. I really wish fabric stores would um, cut on the grain. I don't really see the big deal. I would. And you know, I, we had so many quilters come back and say, you guys are absolutely right. I only needed this amount and I got to use all of it. And usually um, I, I lose some. Because you have to, you, you need to cut your quilt squares on grain. A lot of quilters might not, but it's, it's pretty important. All right, that's my rant. I've ranted at you guys a few times today, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm just gonna check my yardage here. Um, it looks like I have plenty to do my pants just stacked, so I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna cut all my little pieces down here, so. Someone just follow? We got the corgi. I cannot see that thing, it's so small. Thanks for following. I can't see the name, I'm really sorry. Sometimes Streamlabs tells me what the name is, sometimes they don't. And my image of me is this big. <laughs> my eyesight's not that good. I don't know if it ever was. All right, so I do need my... Yeah, I'm always like trying to spread the word of my grain line um, odyssey, you know, like, or more my, um, my grain, what's my grain line platform. Speaking of grain lines, I wish this one went all the way up here. Okay. I've just got pieces everywhere, sorry. <laughs> it's looking like a hot mess right now. <laughs> 
<laughs> um, and these are on the length grain, the waistbands. They take up a fair bit of fabric, so I think I can get them on the side here. That's great. My table is too small for this. I just want to, I'm sorry, I just want to slide this closer to me. Yeah, every time I bring that up with a fabric store, I'm always like, hey, I've, um, do you guys cut on the grain and 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 then you they they don't I usually have to you know like explain that and I was like oh I was just curious you know that's usually how I started <laughs> and if they want to talk about it um, then I talk about it a little bit <laughs> carry on you love a rant <laughs> yep yeah right Lisa that is so true um, or they're or they um, they're like crafters but they're just not in the sewing world but they still have to cut fabric yeah. So, um, but it is a really good conversation starter. But the thing is, usually most people take any kind of conversation as um, confrontation. And I'm all about like, let's talk about it and figure it out. Like I find it really exciting to learn more. Like, and it's sometimes really hard to know how to phrase a question that doesn't sound like you're challenging someone, you know? Like, I'm always trying to figure out how to do that better. Ugh, I'm losing my fabric off the table. But the salvage doesn't lie. You know? And if it does, I don't know that it does, and I don't think anyone else thinks it does. <laughs> so... And the thing is, like, you know, people can use the role. They think that that's the, 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 the easiest way to do it. And it is, you know. Yeah. Yeah, right? I mean, that's the thing is a lot of people think that when you cut parallel to the bolt or the roll, that that's on grain, and it's not. Your store manager didn't have so. <laughs> wow. I don't know what to say about that. Um, I'm going to clip these with my knife, but I'm not going to at the top there. I'm going to use my little scissors. Um, I'm not going to clip those. I, I, know that's, I know this is the back. <laughs> it just weakens the fabric, so I just, I try not to. All right, so, so, okay, so the reason I do a drill is that if, um, if it were me, I would actually drill a hole the fabric too, you know? And you you really don't need to do that. That is such an, you know, specialized thing to do. Like, I, it's nothing, it's just, a, it's a production thing. It's a factory thing. It's a cheat. It really is a cheat. I didn't realize the hole of my screw punch fits my pins though. That's exciting. It wouldn't fit my other pins. All right, so it's gonna mark my. You guys like that I went with the black? You guys encouraged me. I really need some black pants, huh? I just don't like having that conversation with someone and they're just like, we would lose money if we did that. And I'm like, no, you wouldn't. So. Yeah. Yeah, right, Eliza. I mean, I understand that. And you know, honestly, that would be, a, 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 um, I wonder if any of them end up getting kind of interested in it, you know? So, all right, so here is our, let's just punch this while we're here. I'm always, I'm punching a hole in it. That's what I'm doing over there. not leave that there because I'll think it's fabric I can cut into. Let's do some of our little guys here. We just need one and one. Okay. 
one and one. I don't want to be that close to the selvage, but I can get my carriers, uh, belt loops, sorry. Come a little further away from the selvage. Honestly, cutting belt loops is easier with just your ruler, you know? I'm being really diligent about my pattern pieces because I moved my recycling bin so far away that um, I don't want to accidentally throw it on the floor and then recycle it because I've definitely lost pattern pieces that way. I don't need the fold line, but I do need, this is nice and reassuring having a little notch down here when we're doing our uh, zipper. I just noticed that um, I, I, I remember someone on my in my Instagram feed getting like a new office like an actual public space. And it was this pattern company. And I think she's having her opening this week weekend. So that's pretty exciting. Like getting your, your first like public space. I can't imagine like people uh, would come in to, to visit. They'd be like happen to be coming through my town and say, hey, you know, um, I wanna do interfacing in this. Can I, can I stop by and see your shop? Like, do you have open hours? And I'm like, oh, well, we're just a workshop. You know, you can come. But um, we weren't, like, open to the public, you know. But uh, it was fun having people come sometimes. There's no way we'd get work done if we had a shop, though. Like a, like a star, <laughs> you know. Oh, that's funny, Lisa. You, you, so you got all of the sewing questions. You were the resident genius, the expert. That's a lot of pressure. <laughs> all right, so let's look at our green line here, four and an eighth. So, okay, here's another. I can't believe I forgot this obvious thing. This is this ties in with my whole green line, cutting fabric on the green line ramp. All right, so say you... Um, we're able to get the fabric to, um, you, you have it folded like this and you lined up that cut edge pretty good. Um, which if it were as far off as this one was, it would to you would see diagonal lines on the fabric. It wouldn't lay flat. That's how I, know, I can tell first off, right? Um, but I just make sure I line up the selvage and it's all that's flat, right? And that's how I can see. But if you, if you, t you were able to get it to lay somewhat flat, lining up with the cut edges, and then you put this lined up with your either like your fold here, or I don't know, you could you could do it on the selvage, you'd be fine. You'd be cutting it off grain and not even knowing you're cutting it off grain. And I just think like if there's a beginner, beginner sewist out there that is having trouble and then they have they run into that, well, it's kind of a bummer. It sets you up to, you know, not succeed as well as you could. I'm gonna push this all the way over there. You know, actually the better thing to do is to do this, right? If I do this, this is on the fold. I still have the biggest piece possible right here, right? Does it fit on the camera? Barely, huh? I still need to cut these pieces here and this piece here.
All right, so eight inches, right? So we can get it perfectly eight to make it easier. Okay, eight. Because look, <laughs> I keep wanting to steal my weights over there, but they're really useful holding my pieces right there. I could use one more though. I always advocate putting your blade against the pattern piece like this. So I'm sorry that I'm going against how I would say to do it. It's really awkward. So um, here's another good opportunity to say, like, if you can trace around your pattern pieces, it's better not to cut around your pattern pieces the way I am with your rotary knife. Like, it's one thing if you're cutting through the paper and you're cutting off excess paper, but um, you can trim off little bits of your pattern, obviously, over and over, and then eventually you're like, why doesn't this thing match up anymore, you know? So, if you can trace it on there, great, but I don't myself, obviously. I'm being way more careful cutting out my jeans, aren't I? Aren't you guys proud of me? <laughs> All right. I need uh, two of these for interfacing. I'll probably use this pattern piece to cut it because it'll be easier. Let's see here. What, do we, what can we get out of this piece right here? I always try and leave the fold available. That way you can get a bigger piece maybe. Right? You can put um, this one, this one, maybe that one. Cool beans, got them all. The green line is, so I'm gonna fold, put this fold right here. Line up the fold that I had like that. Keep it on the grain. Now I'm just looking at the grid on my table right here. So let's see. You just do this. Line up my grain line on the ruler like that. Right? What is that? Six. Upside down and backwards, six. There goes some of my pattern. Whoops. 
I want two of these in interfacing. So move that there. My little rotating rotary mat would be so helpful to keep my blade next to my piece. I could just spin it around, you know. Definitely want these notches so that I put my uh, yoke to the right spot. I mean, this, I feel like, what do you guys think about wrinkles in your yoke? Ooh, this is stretchy. <laughs> I mean, you could interface this or put two layers of fabric here too. I don't know. Maybe that's overkill. I like stability. I feel like these are supposed to be a lighter weight pant. And uh, maybe I'm trying to use the pants to, as a girdle, <laughs> for lack of a better word, right? Like, I feel like I do gravitate towards heavier, sturdier um, denims so that, you know, I have less bumps showing. All right, let's just cut this doohickey off. All right, we just have uh, the um, front pants, I think, or is it the back pants? Yeah, that is. That's such a good um, argument for PDFs, Lisa. It's true. I, I feel like when PDFs started becoming really common, I was a little, I was pretty disappointed and, and, um, and, and maybe it was my own unwillingness to change and I didn't like that they were, the paradigm was changing, you know? So I feel like that was a little bit my problem. And when pattern companies would ask opinions, I would always be like, no, I, I really like printed patterns, not PDFs, you know? Um, and having this stream made me uh, confront that because not everybody can get a printed pattern. You know, may, they may be in another country and they don't want to pay the shipping, you know? So the PDF's really great, having that option. Um, but also like what you're saying is like you can print another one and so i needed to make it so that it was easy and and not like the scary thing to me to do and so it wasn't until streaming and i think it was the mountain view pull on jeans we did as a um uh uh sew along that that's what pushed me and now i i kind of like what i do like about it is that it's a nice way to organize your patterns because they're all in the computer, but it is nice being able to just pop onto my pattern rack and pull it, pull it out. So, yeah, and it's it is it's much sturdier than flimsy pat the tissue. So that's true too. So there's some good reasons to do it, and you know, printing your patterns is not expensive. You know, like if you do the um, so I had to find one of my questions for you guys like. Where are all the places you've printed patterns? Because we've talked about pdfplotting.com and PatternZ. I've never used PatternZ because every time I go to use it, it's not available to me. But um, is there any other big places like that, third-party places? Do I have a nick in my blade all of a sudden? I better not. I'm gonna do a video on how to print PDF patterns that is just only that video and upload it, but it's gonna be a Patreon um, a perk for all the Patreon subscribers. Um, 
So if you're not a Patreon subscriber and you don't want to tell me where you print your patterns, I totally understand. <laughs> All right, let's get our notches. You print them yourself, Malin? Okay. So that was the other thing I recently got over is I've been kind of a big baby about doing that and it was those free range slacks. I really wanted those and um, they came at the perfect time because you know, I really wanted my secret jammies. And uh, it was not a big deal. Like, I don't know why it was such a big baby. I think it's because the first time I ever did it, I was like, what in the actual heck? That was a lot of pa pa paper that I just printed out. But the Scout tee, I'm going to tape that together. I know that won't be very many pieces, you know. All right, you guys. Let's see how big our piece left over is. There's always this piece. This It's the most awkward piece, you know. It's on the fold at least. I could probably do some shorts if I wanted some black denim shorts. It's like garter stitch knitting, so it's kind of mindless, huh? Maybe that's how I should look at it. It's just a time thing too for me. Like if I had to print out a, um, print and tape together a pattern every time for everything we made on here, <laughs> that's not gonna happen for me that's just too much time I'm, I'm actually like when I'm not on camera I'm doing a lot of stuff for the stream you know so your printer died oh that's a bummer all right so I need um interfacing and I actually got this mat out because I think it's gonna be play nicer with this this interfacing that needle sharp sends, which I really like. I like the way it it works, but it um, gets caught in the grooves of my table. So I need a big enough piece for this, and I should probably do it first. So that, um, I need two of them too. So we'll see. So. Oh, that's interesting. Where was I just saying, seeing um, that you, the, what was that pattern that you could print out per size? Like you ordered it by size. What was that? I can't remember now. Let's see, can I get to, this isn't, I don't think this is supposed to be two waistbands. I'm doing it. Yeah, look at that. No surprise, no surprise. Looks probably looks like I'm cutting nothing, huh? Bootstrap? What's bootstrap? I mean like you mean the dress one? Let's see I'm gonna try and take this at an angle. I have uh, other interfacing. I'm not worried about having enough. Just trying to use the piece I got. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I just heard about a place local to me that does it. Because um, if you can find an architect or an engineering, a place that handles like stuff for architects and engineers, uh, they can do it for you sometimes. Sometimes they'll have that or a graphic place. Okay, we'll just do one. And then if I can get the other one out on their grade, if I can't, I have more, I have more uh, interfacing. This is, uh, this is, this is heavier weight than what I've gotten from her before. This cuts way easier. I say that and I haven't lifted it off the table yet, but yeah, this is going to pull right off the table. Great. Yeah, I just cut through my tape. Oh. Oh, okay. Maybe I do have a few places. 
Not bad though. I think I can get that out of there. This interfacing came in my Needle Sharp subscription box. It's really interesting. I feel like Julia um, identified it. So if you look at it, it's got a lot of texture. It's usually a little stretchy too. This one's a little, just a tad heavier than what she usually sends in the boxes. Um, but it is a really nice interfacing. Like at first it used to drive me crazy because these little hairs come off of it and they are kind of annoying. But the way it um, works on the fabric is really nice. So PDF plotting, yeah. You love notions, yeah. <laughs> Meaning like when you sew patterns that are notions cause they're, or wait, wait is that a brand maybe? What is a brand? Let's see if I can get the other one here, on here. I'm double, I think I'm double interfacing my waistband. I, I don't think this is recommend, like I don't think this is in the instructions. I just want my waistband to be a little firmer. So there's a little bit that's not on here, but that's in the seam allowance. I'm not gonna worry about that. And interfacing's typically not on the green. This actually has a selvage though, look. So maybe this is on the green. Eek. like milliner's stuff, you know? It's like a web. Oh, so you guys, um, Hearts is giving me a discount code for you guys. I don't know it right now, um, but I will tell you Soon when we're making something for them. They gave you guys a discount code, which is pretty cool. All right, so here's my other one. Okay. I'm just realizing I should have put one of those upside down, huh? Oh, well. <laughs> uh, let's see here. That fabric's right side up, yeah. So then we'll cut this right side up. Yeek! This is what this interfacing does. It's a little, little uh, finicky. Okay, last thing we're cutting and then we're done. Let's see, do I have enough? I think so. I think so, yeah. Let's see right here. I need one like this. Ooh, so close, so close, so close. Here we go. All right. making sure my blade stays along the paper there. It's kind of thick. Not too hard. You don't ever need your notches on your interfacing. 
Oakley Doakley. Let's stack this up better. So that I'm ready to go. Hey, Karen! I'm not sure your package is going out today because for some gosh darn reason, nobody will pick up my packages right now. And it's so freaking annoying. This town, man. This town and my postal, I, I, it's like, I just don't get it. It's like, it's like, I feel like I'm going crazy. I don't understand. <laughs> like, that's all their job is, right? Is to pick up my packages and then deliver packages, but that, I don't think so. All right, they get the, I even went to the post office and I couldn't, I couldn't do it there either because there was um, a line out the door and I just wanted to drop it off, it's ready to go. But I couldn't wait for 45 minutes. So I was like, okay, I'll try another time. <laughs> so it'll, it'll, it'll happen, it's ready. All right, let's see. Is that? There we go, that looks better, huh? Doesn't that look different? All right, we're okay. I think this is a really good exercise to go through all your pattern pieces and then um, I like to stack them up with the things they're gonna sew with. So like this is the pockets, right? So I put all the pocket pieces together. This is the back and it's gonna get the yoke and the back pocket. So there's that. And sometimes what I like to do is put them in there like this and then fold it. And that's my cue that I have stuff folded in there, right? We have the belt loops and the waistband. These are their own little things. They happen at the very end. I usually put them at the bottom. I was hoping that would have information on the interfacing for you guys. And then there's the front with the fly and then the pocket like that. And then I'm ready to go. Voila. It's Labor Day. Everything's postponed. Oh, God, I won't go out till Tuesday either now. Hmm. Don't you, are you a postal carrier? <laughs> Jan, I've had some amazing postal car carriers. I've lived in an area once for a real long time, 17 years, where we didn't have street mail delivery, so we had to go to the post office every day. Um, it was really rural. So it was one of those areas where you're always explaining to people, sending you things like, oh, I can get, I can't get street delivery for my mail, but um, I can only get street delivery for UPS or FedEx, right? So it was this weird, confusing thing for people. It was really obvious if you lived there. So I had that, and that was awesome. I was at the post office twice a day, sometimes three times a day, because I would drop off mail, pick up mail, and then I would get another package. Um, I've had great, ex great experiences with postal service. I used to go to the post office middle of the night, pick up my baby chicks, and they would always thank me so that they weren't sitting there cheeping all night long. And um, I moved here, and there's this absolutely definite vibe where, all the, and I think it's got to be whoever manages it because all of the postal workers, almost all of them, but like one or two, I've come across, and they retired have this vibe where they're they're like like why are you why are you giving me a package like I, i'll have a package and he'll be like i don't usually come and get get packages i'm like okay well i'm not sure where to put it because it's a locked box and so i can't leave it at the locked box because it would be just sitting there for anybody and it's on the street and it's busy so i'm like okay well, what would you like me to do take it to the post office i'm like but wait, why should I have to take it to the post office and wait in line when it's ready to go? I've done all the work, you know. Duncan rewards points this weekend. Uh, there's not Duncan Duncan's here. So, yeah, I've had so many run-ins with them. And then they would say, oh, take, take all your packages to the loading dock. I took them to the loading dock and no one will help me. Like, I don't want them to unload. I don't want them to do anything. I'm just like, where would you like these? No one will look at me. No one will look me in the eye. I'm like, okay, I just did your job. I just brought it here, and you won't tell me where to put it. I, I've had so many run-ins. One time I was crying when I left because people, then they were all being um, passive-aggressive and not letting me out of the parking lot, and I didn't even leave anything. I finally was like, okay, fine, I'll just take them with me. 
was like, you guys told me to come here. I'm here. Here's the packages. And then they wouldn't let me put them down. It was just so weird. A lot of conflicting information. It's one of my frustrations living here. And they would tell you it's because of the fire. They're all under a lot of pressure. But they were like this before the fire. Promise. The fire just made it worse. So, anyway, I ranted a lot today. I'm really sorry. I'm in a really good mood. <laughs> okay, so we're going to sew these on Wednesday and Thursday. I know some of you work, and it's tough to watch me sew during the day. I apologize for that. And then next Saturday, we're making the Scout Tea by Grainline Studio. And I just came up with that last yesterday afternoon when I saw that they're going to do that. You're in oh, their fight. Oh, I'm sorry, Jan. They also, too, like you'll call them. And I've called them when once I um, missed one of my uh, monthly, uh, like the sales tax, the not sales tax, the employee takings, you know, like those payments. And then I, oh, no, 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 no. I was. It, it, it was it ended up being like I had paid it that's what it was I had paid it but it was misfiled because up until like eight months I had to file under one number and then once that eighth month of the year happened I had enough money paid that I was a different category but you had to just do that and then they were just like you missed all these months and I'm like but I didn't I just couldn't file in that category till I was in that you know and but they were just like just like so aggressive and I was being really nice you know and I was just like hey I'm just letting you know that I've got it here you know yeah yeah so I feel your pain Jim all right Eliza um <laughs> is it football season please don't tell me it's football season oh my god okay so I am sewing the ash jeans by Megan Nielsen patterns on Wednesday and Thursday part one part two so usually we cut on Wednesdays and sew on Thursdays. Yeah, right, Sarah? It's workplace culture. I totally think that's it. Um, and then Saturday, next Saturday, a week from today, we're going to do the Scout Tea by Grain Line Studio. I look like the biggest Grain Line Studio fangirl, but um, it's just a coincidence. I mean, I'm a fan of theirs, but you know what I mean? It's a coincidence. I trust their patterns. I'm curious about the armhole and the sleeve on that one because I typically need to lower it. Yeah, yeah, you're welcome, Eliza. And you know me, I'll spam it on Instagram. Well, spam it, meaning I'll post it once. <laughs> so um, the schedule's always posted on Monday or Tuesday. It'll be posted on Tuesday this week because um, Monday is a holiday here in the States, and I think in Canada as well. And I'm actually gonna be away for the day, so I can't even post it. So. Um, I'll see you guys on Wednesday for sure. And we'll be sewing these. I'm really excited to sew these. I'm excited about the modifications and I love that we have the pocket experiment to try with the tummy panel, you know? So that'll be fun. Flamingos inbound. That's good, Lisa. My peel was too. They were great. Yeah, bye Deb. Yep, yep, yep. All right, you guys, um, thank you so much. Um, am I hangry? I'm not, I'm not. Oh, hi, Joaquin. Joaquin, are you playing any Fortnite or are you too busy? I'm not. It's making me ragey. But I promise I'm not ranting because of that. I have just haven't, I've been playing Minecraft, you guys. I've never played it before. What an interesting game. <laughs> bye you guys thanks for coming um i will see you wednesday and that's why i figure he's been busy with school good that's way better school's way better joaquin you don't want to play right now there's all kinds of stuff in the game that'll frustrate you <laughs> all right you guys um oh cool well yeah definitely listen eliza we'll try and say hi to you have a great weekend you guys so all the things or make your table and cut your fabric on grant grain. Do you care? Oh my gosh, really? Yeah, yeah. Hi, Eileen, Eileen, hi, we're leaving now. Oh, I'm so sorry. We just cut out the ash jeans and I made a few pattern alterations, so it was really fun. I ranted a little bit today, though, I'll warn you. I ranted a little bit, a few times. So, <laughs> you know. Cool, well, um, I'm excited. Um, Jan made me want some iced tea and some watermelon, so I'm gonna have that now. And I will see you guys Wednesday. Have a fantastic weekend. If anyone knows any fabric stores I need to visit in Sacramento, please let me know. Yeah, you should say bye-bye. Sorry, I'm sorry. 
So we'll see you soon. Um, 11 a.m. Pacific. And um, yeah, support me on Patreon if you want. Um, it's always really helpful. A few of you have increased your amounts that you're giving me. That is over and above. You guys are amazing. And um, I'm going to start trying to do some dedicated videos for you guys. So thank you. <laughs> so, all right. Have a great weekend, you guys. And I hope you have a great beginning of your week as well. Or if you're on holiday, enjoy. Be safe and take care. See you guys soon.